So I feel really, really privileged. We had the privilege of having the Chama Kaplan before. She's actually, if I can say so myself, absolutely beyond brilliant. Um, and you know, when I read her bio, I'm, I'm just like in awe. I, I, I'm just in awe of these Jewish women. And it's just like, when you listen to this, you're gonna feel the same way. <laughs> so we're in awe, Nechama. So Nechama Kaplan loves learning with and teaching women how to reframe life to reflect the divine reality. Through learning Tanya and the teachings of Hasidus for the past 10 years, she is constantly challenging herself and others to integrate the divine truth into our very physical and practical lives. Recently, she has been teaching daily Tanya on Chabad.org in an effort to encourage women to upgrade our consciousness and reveal our true power in infinity. She has an eclectic past, academic, all-American athlete from Vassar College, Harvard Public Health School master's degree, internet, internet advertising executive and Montessori preschool founder and director. She's now an energy practitioner living in Tzfat, Bir HaKodesh. I feel extremely privileged and humbled <laughs> to introduce you, Nahama Kaplan. Thank you so much, Nahama, for coming on. Nahama, are you there? Yeah, Nomi, that's how I feel about you. <laughs> and that's how I feel about every single one of the women on this call. I mean, it's when you're with a bunch of Jewish women, you're always just humbled because uh, the Shina is there. <laughs> Anyway, um, thank you so much for inviting me. And I am um, always so moved to be on this call. Um, the, the passion and the love of Hashem and the longing for Mashiach is so palpable here. And um, it's just very special energy. So, um, so Naomi, you mentioned that tonight is Chav uh, Elul. And it's the first day of creation. And the first day of creation is only significant in relation to the last day of creation, which is the creation of man, and um, which is the purpose of which is to create a, a Jewish nation that will serve Hashem um, with Torah and with mitzvot in order to reveal the Shrina and reveal Hashem in the physical reality, which is what you're, we're all trying to do here. Um, the holy, holy Jewish women. It just, um, yeah. So today is, is uh, it says the, 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 the end is wedged in the beginning and the beginning is wedged in the end. The end is total manifestation, uh, total revelation of Hashem in this world. And it all begins tonight um, when, the, when Hashem starts the flow. So um, in that regard, I just wanted to, ground us for a minute. Um, something that I've been doing personally um, lately is really trying to, if, if the goal of creation is to get us to a place of revelation of God in this physical world, um, it has to be in our physical body. And um, we know that the body is housing the soul. So the soul has the aspects of the intellect, it has the aspects of the emotions it has, um, and also the garments of the soul, which we know, we know is thought, speech, and action. And um, all of this can get very theoretical. <laughs> um, and we learn, and we pray, and that we pray from our heart, um, and we learn in our mind, and we do deeds um, with, our, with our body, with our mouth, we say, we speak, we learn Torah with our mouth. Um, but something that I've been doing that I just wanna share with you is kind of, um, bring it back to like the purpose of creation is to really be manifesting this in our bodies. And even though we've learned that um, the Baal Shem Tov teaches the idea of Shana and Olam and nef nef Nefesh and Shama, whatever that we're, that we're all basically occupying a time space continuum at every moment. So um, I don't know why I just feel very um, pushed to share this with you guys right now, because I've been having these experiences of, this time that we're in right now is, is a moment that will never exist again in history. The space that we're in, in our physical body with our soul in, in, inhabiting it at this moment, it's a fusion that will never take place again. And this is a fusion of the essence of Hashem manifesting itself 
in the physical world. And so I just want to offer um, and invite anybody who wants to practice this to really um, use the idea of time, space, and soul um, as a meditative work um, to really ground the practice of bringing Mashiach into reality on a regular basis. So that could be something as simple as, you know, you're drinking your cup of coffee um, and you're like, okay, my soul is occupying this space in this chair with this cup and this coffee that's all occupying a certain amount of space. And I'm doing it in this particular time, in this moment on the clock. So I just, I'm offering this as like a way to really take everything and just ground it down into the moment, um, which is creation. That's the whole purpose of creation. Okay, so um, today's talk, um, I, I don't know why, it was just very, <laughs> as Naomi was saying, I, I had a different topic and I just got very emotionally uh, excited about teaching about the idea of tzedakah. Um, so if our goal, because our goal is Mashiach now, and we're all yearning and we're all longing and we're all doing our highest and best um, that we can, tzedakah has the biggest bang for the buck. Uh, pun intended. It literally is called the mitzvah in the Yerushalmi Talmud. It, it's it's called the commandment. And the Alter Rebbe um, in the Tanya, he talks about tzedakah um, in the Igeris Hatshuva, excuse me, the Igeris Kodesh, which is the, the book of the Tanya. It's like um, one of the, the five books of the Tanya that we're reading now. Um, no fewer than 11 chapters of the 20 some chapters are, um, are designated to discuss the idea of tzedakah. And each one is like a higher and deeper level of understanding of what tzedakah is. Um, but he also discusses it on a very, um, uh, I'm not gonna say a basic level, but like a, a really like to, to just understand really truly what it means. So in chapter 37 of Tanya, the altar is, is talking about what's the purpose of creation, which is so fitting, as we said, because it's ha ha hey hello tonight. The purpose of creation is to make um, this world reflect God. And the way that we do that is by taking the physicality of this world, including ourselves, our humanness, and giving it over to God. So the way that we do that is through performing of mitzvahs, as we know. And every time we do a mitzvah, we are mamshich giloi orein sof barahu. We are pulling down the revelation of orein sof from above to below to be enclosed in the physical world. So what we're doing in a mitzvah is we are taking a physical object and we are making a channel for ein sof barahu to dwell and become um, um, it's like uh, invested, garbed in the physical reality. So when we do that, something miraculous happens. Um, we take this physical world, which is a covering for Hashem, and we reveal him there. Even though we can't see it because we're living in Gullus, and we don't see the revelation of Hashem, that's actually what's happening. We actually are the conduit to take orange soap and draw it down into a physical reality. Um, and when we do that, the klippa that's covering over this, to covering over God in this reality gets pushed to the side. And now the godliness that was in that thing emerges. So the question is, um, I, I would just wanna say that this is, um, the language of the, of the altar is so beautiful. I just wanna quote this. He says, each spark descended into this world to be clothed in a body and a human soul for the sole purpose of doing a tikkun on them and separating them from the impure klippos, which means that we are here to sift away what is not holy and to reveal what is holy. And we do this through the mitzvot. So the way that we get the biggest bang for the buck is by giving tzedakah. And why is that? Because what is tzedakah? Tzedakah is the money that we give to Hashem, which comes from the work of our hands, so to speak, the work of our mind, the work of our heart. Let's think about what is work for a minute. When you do work, when we do work, we are literally investing our entire being into our work. And some people 
more than others, some husbands more than others, but work really is, um, is, is a, is an all encompassing energetic suck. It takes your mind, it takes your heart, it takes your clothes, it takes your car, it takes your, all your energy, it takes your food because everything that you eat gets turned into blood and that becomes energy. So to, so when you make money, when you're working, you're basically taking all of the things that God has placed around you in your reality, in your physical reality, and you're bringing them into yourself and you are producing something. So now what? Now you've produced something, okay? You made a a piece of code, you made a cake, um, you know, whatever. You um, wrote a poem, made an art project, like a, a piece of art, whatever you did, wrote a song, whatever you did, that took up all of this energy. And now what are you doing? You sell it or you, you, um, you know, you sell yourself basically by doing your work. And now you have to take a piece of that, a tenth or a, um, a fifth of what you just did, and now you have to say, you know what, I'm taking this, which I took my whole life and I put it into this thing. And now, God, I'm giving it to you. That's what tzedakah is. It's basically taking a piece of yourself and your, your, all the work and all the energy that you just expended in, in making money and you're giving it to Hashem. And what I, I, I'm calling this is it's the biggest energy exchange that we can make in this world. Because we're taking the energy of ourself in all of its glory, and we are giving some of it to God. And so why is this so powerful? Is because when we do a mitzvah like lighting candles, for example, okay, now we have the, the, the candles and we light them and we make a bracha. And we know that when we do a mitzvah, what happens? The energy of Hashem comes and lands in that place. Like I said, like the Ein Sof light is now being drawn down into our hands that are making the bracha, our mouth, which is mouthing the words of the bracha and the candlesticks themselves. Okay, so while we're in the act of the mitzvah, those things now become complete conduits to Ein Sof Barahu, complete and utter conduits. We are literally channeling infinity into the world, which is just miraculous and marvelous. But with a mitzvah of tzedakah, we are doing that a million fold because we took all of the things that we interacted with in the physical world and we are now giving a fifth of it or a tenth of it to God. So that means just by the very fact that we gave tzedakah, even if you didn't think about anything else, a tenth of your clothes, a tenth of your house, a tenth of your car, a tenth of your food, a tenth of your whatever, all your electronics, every single thing that you use in order to work now is automatically given over to God. So that is way more impactful in terms of bringing this godly light into the world because now it's just not my hands and the candlesticks. Now it's all the things in my house that I was, were involved in my making the money. And the altar says further, because we gave that 10% or, 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 um, or 20%, it elevates everything that was involved. So literally giving tzedakah has the effect of elevating huge swaths of the physical world and allowing Ein Sof Baruch Hu to come and to dwell down in that place. So it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous effect of this mitzvah. And that's why it says here that shakulo keneged kol ha mitzvos, that tzedakah is Kulok connected kola mitzvos. It's it's greater than all the other mitzvos, and it's called sheikar ha mitzvos ma masios. That's what the altar Rebbe calls it. It's the ikar of all of the 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 mitzvos ma masios, the ones that we we actually physically do, and he says it surpasses them all. And the reason is just to re reiterate is because if the purpose of the mitzvos are to elevate the human soul. Like I said before, what are we doing here? Why did God create the world? What's so special about Chav Hei Elul and, and Rosh Hashanah and everything for that matter? It's because Hashem decided in his Ratzon that he wants whoever we are down here on the physical earth completely separated from him in our consciousness to house him and to make a place where he can dwell. And the most impactful way that we can do that is by giving more of ourselves. And the way we give more of ourselves is through Tadaka. So um so he says um 
Yeah, okay. Um, the other point is when you give, when you do another mitzvah, the shrina or the, the dwelling, it's not the shrina, it's the dwelling of Ein Sofar who was only there at the time of the mitzvah itself. So when you light candles, you have this indwelling at the, at the moment of the mitzvah. Okay, yes, we don't see it, we don't feel it because we're still living in Hester Panim. We're still living in a total tzimtzum. We're still in Gullis. We, we, we haven't reached through and broken through this mask of reality. But tzedakah helps us do it more and it helps us do it faster. And as I said, it's the, the greatest energy exchange that we can do. So um, I just want to give um, another example of this power of tzedakah and how it's um, quantitatively so um, superior to all the other mitzvahs because quantitatively, as I said, we're elevating more of, of our life. We're giving more of our life over to God. And what is Mashiach anyway? I just want to clarify this point. Mashiach is when every physical thing has now lost its shell and now the, the godliness that's inside of it can be revealed. So when we do Torah mitzvahs, what are we doing? We're thinning the membrane that separates us between um, this world and God. And so the more that we're thinning the membrane, the more that we are um, rectifying and showing that this world really is just about God and it's not about me and my physical life. And the more that we're, we're doing mitzvahs and, and revealing God in that way, the more that God is actually going to start to become revealed through physicality. And so we want to do this quickly. And, you know, I was just thinking about Naomi, like, we're like, it's such an urgency. It's such a yearning. Like we want to just bring Mashiach already. What are we going to do? And, and, and the, the answer is give more tzedakah. And I, this is so not like a, a happy, you know, people are like, no, Tzedakah, I give Tzedakah. Like, don't ask me for any more money. Like, please stop asking. My, I said to my husband, he's like, it's like, you just get inundated with requests for money. Um, and it's like overwhelming. You're like, I gave my my, my 10%, I gave, I'm done, or or I didn't give, and I'm not going to give more than this because I made a husband that this is for Tzedakah and that's for Tzedakah and I don't have to give any more Tzedakah. The, the, the point here is we need to get out of the human mindset and to think about it from a much bigger perspective, which is if we're really longing for Geula and we really want to see the end result of creation, then we want to do as much as we can to get our human selves out of the way and use our human selves to be the conduit for this unbelievable light. And I just want to give an example about qualitatively the effect of tzedakah. So we were saying quantitatively, it elevates more of the world quicker and faster. But quantitatively, what Hashem gives us as a result of the tzedakah that we give is just mind blowing. And I just want to give a little mashal that the altar uses um, in, I think it's Agar Sachuva chapter eight, where he talks about the idea of a seed. When we plant a seed in the earth, what is that seed? It's like an, an apple seed. It's like all shriveled up and you stick it in the earth. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, some water and some light and some time passes and all of a sudden it starts to sprout and it grows and it grows and grows and grows and grows and becomes a tree and it makes its own fruits. And now it has millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of seeds. So what happened? We, we put a little seed in the earth. And the earth, we know from Hasidus, is the power of growth. The power of growth is Hashem's energy. So the seed, all we did was put the seed in the earth. It decomposed. And now we made space for the earth, which has the real power of growth, to turn that little seed into a tree, which multiplied a million trillion times the number of seeds, both in quantity and quality. Because not only is it a seed, and now it's an apple, and it's delicious, and it's healthy, and all these other things. So this is an analogy for what happens when we give tzedakah. We take this little seed and we put it in the, in the earth. We take our own effort and we say, okay, Hashem, here, this is for you. And we plant it. It comes from us. But now Hashem's like, wow, you planted a seed. You are amazing. Now I'm going to give you a huge tree full and full and full of fruits. And what are those fruits? That's the light of Ein Sof shining down into this world. So for this tiny little thing that we did, we stuck a couple coins in the pushka. We gave a check for $1,000, whatever it was that we did. Now, what are we getting back? We're getting back, oh my gosh, 
like unbelievable rays of the of 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 the of um of orane soul entering into this world and thinning the membrane more and more and more. And tadaka is called um, the wide path. Why is it called the wide path? It's because this is another way of understanding the qualitative effect of tadaka. When we do our part and we we put our energy in and we we give. Tzedakah makes a spiritual vehicle for Hashem to shine into this world immense amounts of, 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 uh, of Shefa, of, I don't know what you want to call it, it's Orain Sof. <laughs> um, we could get very, you know, in technical and say like the Sovave light that Hashem is shining down here um, is just blowing, blowing away, um, you know, the darkness of this world. That's what Yeshua is. What is it, Yeshua? We're asking for Yeshua. You say tzedakah, I think it's, um, I forget the, oh, Zureya tzedakah, Matniach Yeshua. Zureya tzedakah, you're planting tzedakah and it's it's causing the Yeshua to sprout. So going back to this analogy, when we plant tzedakah, it sprouts Yeshua. What are Yeshua? Yeshua is when darkness is turned into light, right? And that's what this, light of Hashem is doing when we plant our little seed. So um, that's really what I wanted to say. Um, I want to say, very practically speaking, how do we, oh, people are leaving. That's because I talked about money. <laughs> um, just kidding. Um, so there's just a few practical things that I wanted to offer with respect to Tzedakah. And that is, um, what works for me is I always have a tzedakah, um, pushka, in, we, we have one in my kitchen, we have them all over the house, and I always have jars full of small change everywhere around my house. And I just have the practice that whenever I'm going to, of course, before we daven, before we do a mitzvah, before we light candles, um, before anything, really, I'm always giving tzedakah. And the reason that's so important is because it becomes a habit. You become habituated to doing kindness for others. And so it's just part of the process of, you know, and, and the, the altar makes a very important point. He said, it doesn't matter that you give a large amount. It's more important that you give the same amount in smaller increments, because each time you do it, it has this cosmic effect. So it doesn't matter that you're giving a huge amount. It, yes, you have to give the huge amount, but you don't have to give it all at the same time. Um, and the other thing is, that, um, uh, oh, just also, I just want to point out, we don't usually give to duck at night. I'm just getting practical here for a second because the attribute of din is, um, is shining in the, in the, in the universe. And we, when we give to duck at night, it can, um, give the, the nurture to the clippa, but, um, but obviously if someone comes and asks us specifically for sadaka at night, we have to give. Um, so Oh, and the other, the other idea that I want to say about having these pushkas all around the house, these, these tzedaka boxes all around the house is it also makes that space in your house holy. So wherever you have a tzedaka pushka and you're constantly using it, it is like radiating out energy and light of godliness. And especially if you're using it all the time. And, and here I'm just going to wrap, uh, wrap up and go for full circle. When you, when you give the tzedaka, in that moment, you can think, okay, wow, I am actualizing the whole purpose of creation right now. I have time, which is this moment. I have space, the, the, the pushka right here in this place in my house. And I have soul. I have the embodiment of my soul in my physical reality, in my physical body. And I'm bringing all those things together. I'm breaking out of this world consciousness. I'm really, really tapping into the whole purpose of creation is for this moment. And in fact, God is creating the world and every second just for this moment of my giving to Dapa. And when we start to practice doing that, it really takes us into a whole nother reality because we start to really realize how important our acts are and how amazing we are and how we're literally partners with God at every moment of our lives. And so it's just um, a really good way to get you out of depression, anxiety, sadness, whatever it is, if you're constantly in this motion of I matter because I am uh, the conduit for this divine energy, this Shefa, this, I'm not gonna call it Shefa because it's or, 
um, but the, the, the infinite light of God that is wide and broad and can really transform the world very quickly. Um, and it should happen, you know, now. <laughs> Hama, you are like, I, I'm telling you, you're, you're unbelievable. You're, oh, you're like, please? <laughs> no, no, you're, you're like just brilliant. You're, you're just, and even when you give it over, I just got to tell you, it's not just even what comes out of you naturally, but the way you give it over is so unbelievable. I want to tell you something that I read this Shabbos, which was unbelievable. Uh, if I can add this, this was just so unbelievable. And it, it, it's, it's one of my very, um, something that I'm very connected to the concept of staka. Um, but I want to tell you that I was reading this Shabbos, something amazing that I had never heard before. And it said that, why is it that there, that in, in the Parsha, it tells us that the first Bikurim, we have to give to the Rabban Shalom, right? We have to give it away, right? So he says the most amazing thing, if you have a, if you have a, a, a farmer comes to his field, right? And he, he was planting months before, right? He was doing all this stuff and he's waiting for his, 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 his food to come up that came from the seed, right? The first thing that he does when he comes down to this field is he is literally elated, right? Here he was with his hands and he did all this stuff and he comes down to his field <laughs> and he sees the most amazing thing that it worked. So it said, unbelievable, that everything that's good and the best always has to go to Hashem first. Mm -hmm. That's why the Rabbani Shalom, because the first bit of the Bikurim and the excitement that it creates, that's, that's the best. That's the best that we have to offer. And then he goes on to say something, and it's so true, and we're not used to this as a people. He says, so when you, when you give food, don't give over your leftover food. Give your best food because you're giving it to a sham. He says, and when you're giving clothes, don't give your hand-me-downs, right? What's left over, this is going to God. Give your best clothes or give clothes that have never been worn, right? And he says, and when you give in, in, any, in any bit of whatever it is that you're giving, give the best. Because that all goes to Hashem. The best goes, the first and the best goes to Hashem. And it's, it's, it, it's just unbelievable because when you, when, you, when you understand that, you know, you know, not in a critical way, but you know, I hear many, many times when people go through food banks and they do all these things, that they have to take out all the food that people put in for Pesach that was, already expired. And we have to understand that, first of all, when we give staka, we're a kli. We're creating a kli. We're creating a vessel to receive, right? It's like when you go into a tzaddik, you know, people don't understand it. People think, oh, I, I went to the tzaddik and I had to give a check. But what you're doing is you're asking for a bracha. It's an exchange. It's an exchange right? You go to a therapist, you're getting an exchange, you speak, right? This is even a greater exchange, right? You're giving a piece of yourself. You're giving your life. You're giving your blood. Because what does it say? That, that money is at the same root as, as the soul. Money is the same root of the soul as the soul. And money, mamish, a tzaddik once told me that a Jew loves nice things. Why? Because it comes from Ghanaian, right? So we had the sweetest case of the nicest things, right? But what happens? He comes down to the world in his body and he mixes up the sweetness of what he had in Ghanaian and he mixes it with the, with, the, with the sweetness of the physicality. So he, he exchanges the whole concept, right? So it says... You know, and I've learned this in all different ways. Why do we give a pidyon? Why, why is it the Zohar brings out the whole concept, right? That when a person gets sick and they go to a tzaddik and a tzaddik asks for a, for a pidyon, why is it? Because first of all, uh, 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 you, can't, you, can't, you can't medically uh, treat a Jew the same way that you can treat a, a Gentile because the Jew is under the auspices of God in some way, the divinity of God. So his, 
healing comes through a very, very different way, right? Mm -hmm. So the Zohar says, why is it that a person gives a pigeon? Because it says that when, it, when there's a dean on a person, right? That what happens is, is that the doctor who's giving the medication, it's so specific, the Zohar says, there has to be a certain time, a certain, a certain, a, a certain way. Like there's, there's all these things that can only come with a cure once you have Dean, right? Mm -hmm. it, has to be, it has to be at a certain hour that the medication, it has to be a certain type. There's a whole list, but it doesn't work that way because medicine is all the same, right? People don't get, so what does a pigeon do? A pigeon obliterates all that that the Zohar says, and it brings you to a different level that the person doesn't need any of those things, right? And then why do we do it? Because if you look, money is like our blood, exactly like you said. You work, you toil for it, and it's the hardest thing for people to give. So when they give it, it's like you're giving your life to Hashem. You're literally giving a piece of your life to Hashem. And it's, 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 the, greatest, it's, it's the greatest thing. So I'm sorry, I just had to, uh, I just had to continue um, oh, to share. And this was so unbelievable. I'm going to open it up to a few questions, Nahama, if that's okay. I just, I, just want to say, I just want to say one more thing. Um, I, you know, I was talking about this to somebody, and she was like, but, you know, then people come, they have so many kids. Like, can't they just get a job? Why do they have to have so many kids? And, and I was like, they have to have so many kids because the world needs people who need tzedakah. Because if it's an energy right. exchange. If you don't right. have people who need, then you have no one to give to. So it, we have to give because that's right. the way that the world is stands. giving us the ability to draw his light down here. If we don't do that, the light can't come down. That come, can't come down. That's the energy exchange. So it has to be. So instead of looking at people who are asking you for money as, a, as an annoyance, you should just be like, thank you, Hashem, that right. I get to be the conduit for this energy exchange. Thank you. You're giving me the opportunity to be the conduit right. for you. It's just such a, again, it's like reframing the way that we're seeing right. the world. We're seeing this as, as we are literally God's arm. God is using us to give tzedakah to another person. That, that's right. what we are. We're the conduit. So instead of thinking about it as like, oh, my, it's, it's interfering with my, yeah, it's my blood. I don't want to give my blood to this person, this whatever. Right. Like we have to get out of that mind frame and, and see it from a from a higher vantage point to really see how lucky we are that we get to give tzedakah. Like, wow. Right. You know, a, a Rav once told me, a Rav once told me that if people would understand what Staka really is, and if they would know what it does for them in Shemayim, right? They'd be dancing all day. They would be dancing, looking all day to what, to what, to what, what it is. And, and, it, and, it, and, it, 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 and we don't even know what death it saves from, what dinim right. it saves from, what gzeras it saves from. And it tips the scale in the whole world. When we do something, it's a mirror image that manifests into the whole world. Exactly. You know, and the altar he says also, he says, if someone was sick, God forbid, they would spare not one penny to get right. well. Not one penny. Right. So who's, who knows how sick we are spiritually? Who right. knows? Like what? We're going to like niggle around with like whatever we like. No, just give and give and give and give and give. So because if we really want Mashiach that badly, if we right. really want it that badly, right. we are going to go out of our comfort zone. We have to go out of our comfort zone. That's the whole right. point. Go out of your comfort zone. Don't make calculations. And especially now during this time where Hashem is, is about to give us an influx of godly energy that has never been in this world before. Before, When we blow the shofar, we are going to be receiving a new light. Well, if we're giving our kishkas to, to you, God, then you're going to give us your kishkas. Right. <laughs> and right. and that's, now is the time to just forget all calculations. Literally, if right. anybody asks you for money right now, give something. I don't care. Give $10, give five shekels, just give something and just go out of your comfort zone. Because I, I honestly think that that's what, well, that's what we need to do right now. It says right. that the tzedakam, um, geula. it brings the geula closer. So if we're really yearning for Geula and we know that the 
we know this is the, the magic formula. What is holding us back? And that's really the question from a healing perspective. Why are we being held back? What, where is the ego putting the claws in that's keeping us from manifesting this? And, and I know it's a touchy, touchy subject and I, I'm not trying, I mean, we're all guilty of it on right, some level, right. but I just think now is a really a good time as Elul for us to really think about what is our relationship to Tzedakah and how can we step into this new space with a more expansive viewpoint. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Nahama. I'm gonna open it up to questions. Anybody have any questions? Shandy, I see your hand up. <laughs> Shandy? Shandy, you there? Yes, Shandy? I'm here. I'm sorry. I was, I was get I was I wanted to tell everyone. You that were emptying I, your I, pockets to give Saka. <laughs> no, no, I want. I know. Every, first of all, thank you for that amazing share. You were amazing. amazing. And I wanted to tell what I was told a couple of years ago by my cousin Liba, my uncle Label Sisman, Oliver Shalom. He was a Holocaust survivor and he was a Chabad. Um, and he wrote the book, I Believe, if anyone wants to read an amazing book, he wrote it. And that's my uncle. And he said, you know, all the envelopes that come in your house at this time of year, he said, you're better off giving a dollar in each envelope and mail it than a thousand dollars into one envelope. Because if everyone on this chat did that, look how much each organization would do. And ever since he told my cousin told me that, I during this time of year, I take my I get singles and I've related it to so many people. And during my Tehillim group, I always collect Sadaka. And besides giving Tachnas his color and Hatzalah and other, I do it and put it in the envelope. So like you said, even a dollar. So if you can't afford some, take five envelopes today and put five stamps on it. Some of them have stamps. So take the ones that have the stamps that you don't have to put on and give those dollars. And that's <laughs> part of Tzedakah Mavira Mesroa Hagzeira. But you know what, Shandy? But you know what, Shandy? If I can just say something, and Nahama is going to pipe in here, but if I can just say something, you know, the, the concept of staka also, if I can say it, it, is not giving somebody what you think they need, but giving somebody what they tell you or they feel they need. And, and that's the highest level of staka. Not that, oh, that person's hungry, so I'm going to buy their food for them because I'm going to decide what they should have because I have money and they don't. Actually, it's the opposite. And I, I, wanted, I want to just say something else. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I really do apologize. I hope I'm not being offensive in any way. I'm, I'm extremely passionate about this topic. But I just want to say yes, that- I'm um, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I-, I check off I, at one. And they, she couldn't, she- I, I just want to say, whichever you can just, I, I just want to say that, um, you know, Everything that we have today is from the Rabban Shalom, everything. And um, Rabbi Nachman actually explains that a lot of the pipelines have gotten mixed up. The people, the people that are supposed to be getting are not getting because things have all been mixed up in Shemayim. He talks about that a lot. I learned that in some shiurim. But if I can say that it's not just giving your own staka, but really trying to go out there and look for people that you know that need and, and try to help them, you know? I, I can tell you now that, you know, Naomi's sister does that whole thing of, of shop and share. And I can tell you now in Eretz Yisrael, I know every community has people that don't have enough food um, for Yontif. Mm -hmm. And I know in Eretz Yisrael, it's a very, very big thing. Very, very big thing. I know Nahama can tell you that the poverty levels for some people are astounding. And, um, and, and, and I really, you know, when we sit down, Rosh Hashanah, and Jews are, you know, we're, we're very, we're very, you know, very focused on our food. Um, you know, when we sit down and we're davening to the Rabbani Shalom for Rachamim, and we think about people who are sitting down, Hashem gives such an abundance. People are, are literally, the abundance is crazy. Baruch Hashem, and it should continue. But what I'm saying is, is that the disparity 
is unbelievable. And when you think that you sit down with a whole table of incredible food and you're, you're davening to Hashem for your own personal Yeshua and for the Yeshua of the world and there's people sitting at their table with nothing, we have to think what happens in the heavenly courts. You know, and it's like Nechama said, we're, 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 we're beseeching Hashem now. And, and I think that everything we do, I know, you know, it, it's hard for us to hear all this stuff, but I think that everything we do is, is really, it, it almost, it, it pushes the pendulum. And that's what we need to do now. We need Mashiach. We mamish need Mashiach. We need Hashem to come home. And so stretching ourselves now is, 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 is everything because I, I think we've opened up all, every door. We've been doing this for 3,000 years and we got to oh, push the door. We got to push the door more. We got to uh, push uh, the door more. Naomi, um, I'm going to make a suggestion here just because this whole month has been about practicality. Um, and I don't know if we could do this, but if everyone wants to give 10 or $18 right now, maybe we can co collect money that could be given to people for money for Rosh Hashanah. Right. Right? right. So we have a PayPal account set up, everybody. Um, it's morningnishmat at gmail.com. Um, if everyone, whatever money gives today, we will, you know, put it all together. No, we do have someone or maybe Muhammad does in, in yeah, Israel that we, we can send out money. Yes, right. So enough, let's, yeah. let's, let's make this practical right now. Um, doesn't have to be a lot. Everyone can give whatever they want to or can. And um, we can all feel really good about, about kind of the, taking what we've learned today and putting it right into action. Thanks, Adele. That's Thank awesome. So that is awesome. You know, I just yeah. want to say this is a little mystery here, but one of the things that the author says in one of these um, 11 chapters of, on Sadaka, which each one is literally more mind blowing than the next, is one of the things that he says is he started um, with some of the other Hasidim of the, of the Magid. He started Kol El Chabad in, I think it was 1788. And it's the longest standing um, ongoing um, Jewish charity in Israel. And he would send Shluchim to all the communities in Europe to raise money for these very, very poor Jews who migrated to Israel in order to settle the land. And this was... Um, you know, this was really like, there was nothing here, nothing, nothing, nothing. And they were literally starving. And at one point, um, there was a community that was, you know, had, was, had fallen on hard times and they had stopped their contributions to the Kolo Chabad Fund um, in Europe, wherever they were. And the Altarby wrote, wrote, wrote them a letter and he said to them, I understand that you've fallen on hard times and Hashem should bless you and you should have, um, you know, more and more and more. But what gives you the right to stop giving money to your feather, fellow Jews who are suffering? Um, and he, he said, even though you have less than you used to have, if you have food for your family and you know somebody has no food for their family, what gives you the right to say you're going to have extravagance and they're going to have nothing? Right. And it's a very hard, this is very hard stuff. And, you know, we Jews, a lot of Jews have a lot of money and a lot of Jews, they, they give the way they want to give. And I, and I think the, the, the end, the, the bottom line of this discussion for right now, and I think, thank you for whoever that was who recommended that we give money, but I think whatever you meant to give, you should give a little bit more. I don't care if it's $2 more or $5 more, but it should be out of your comfort zone. It should not be what's comfortable for you. It should be what's a little bit uncomfortable for you. I was talking to somebody and I was like, what, you can't give $50 a month extra? That's like, you go out to lunch, it costs you more than $50. Like, you know, it's just, again, it's about how are we thinking about who we are and how we are. And this is, again, it's about the reframe. If we really want Mashiach and we're really in and we really know the purpose for which our soul was embodied, we need to start acting a little bit differently. So not to, not to, again, I'm not a Musa person, but I just feel also like Naomi, I feel very strongly. There are so many families here in Svad who literally do not have money mm -hmm. for Rosh Hashanah. They don't have. Mm -hmm. And there's, I'm sure in all these different places. And, and I guess just, you know, just like, 
drilling it home there. No, we can. Can I ask a question? I'm, I'm just wondering yeah. how much effort does one have to put into make into seeing that it's really a tzedakah that's uh, that's honest and that's not someone's. Yeah, just... you have to make. Uh -huh. an effort. The Alter specifically says that you oh, effort sure that it's a trusted and re reputable tzedakah. Can I say something? Thank you very much first. So I live in Mansi and I went to Yad Le'achim presentation on Sunday night. And I was um, at the end when they fundraised, I saw there was very poor response. So I took the chutzpah. I told women, you know, everybody goes for gel manicure that costs like $70. You buy dresses for the holiday. Maybe... I know I would stop doing X, Y, and Z so I can have the money to give to this cause, saving our sisters from captivity in, in Arab villages. So I, I did, and right away, people started raising their hands. Sometimes you have to have a little bit of chutzpah to tell people what to yeah. do. And I did, and you know, I'm not sorry I did. I set the example too, because afterwards people did it. And it was a lot of money, so I took my friends, and together we did one one um, a large amount over two years. It doesn't have to be in one. Like you said, you do it many times, the bigger the hood, I'm just giving a big check. So, yeah, we, we have to go in the comfort zone. And there's an aspect of the ego in giving. So that can also be a little selfish, which we have to cut down in the bud so we can give generously the way God gives us generously. He doesn't make us bonot. He gives us what we need, right? Right. So, can I just Thanks. say something? Okay. No, I, I think I think I think Miriam is next. Miriam has been waiting. Hi, Rachel. So just just get let, give Miriam a chance. Miriam, Miriam Weeder. Hi. I see that you're. Go ahead. Hi, I, I'm so blown away that with this um, group. We can't hear you. Can you speak up? I'm Miriam? sorry. Can you can you hear me better now? Yes, we can hear you better now. Go ahead. Um, I was saying that I'm so blown away with this group. It's really so amazing. I, want, I have two questions about, number one, can I donate to, with Zell? And also if maybe somebody can open up a, a permanent um, like place where we can send regularly to. to, to but there is, people. Miriam, if you go into your own community, I'm sure wherever you live. I, yeah, I but sure. you, you specifically mentioned the hungry people in Israel. So I'm wondering. Right. Um, right. So the, right. There's, there, is, there is an idea that it's very important to give to it. Um, there, there, you know, the Rambam says, right. first you have to give to Israel. family, and then you have to give to your local, the people who need locally, like if you know people in your neighborhood who need. But then if there's one, the next ring is the poor of, of Eretz Israel before any other charities. Right, right. Hi, Rachel, you want to go ahead? Sorry, I yeah. interrupted you yeah. before. Um, go ahead. Problem. Yeah, I just wanted to make a suggestion to people that may, may not have thought of this idea. I thought of it a few years ago. It must not be an original idea, but um, I set up a special MISER account at the bank. We're, you know, we're members of Citibank. We have our regular accounts at Citibank. And, in my, and, and we set up a MISER account. And basically, what at 10% of my weekly paycheck automatically is transferred in to this MISER account. And then if you get, you know, checks from other places, wh whatever my, my husband's earnings, then he has to do it manually. But mine is automatic. It just goes in 10 percent. I never see that money. So what, what that does for us psychologically is this is not our money and it, it, it gets collected there. And sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, um, depending on where we're donating to. And this is how we also can keep track of how much we have available to donate. Um, you know, sometimes we give a little more than, than the 10%. Sometimes, you know, it, 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 like, like I said, it goes in manually if we get a check from somewhere else. But my paychecks are 10% 10, 10 automatically. I never knew, I never thought it was my money in the first place. It's not my money. It's somebody else's money. It's Hashem's money. And, it, and we're just hold, holding on to it until we find where we're distributing it to. And if you do that, you don't, it doesn't hurt as much to give tzedakah. And, you, and it, it, it's just a matter of deciding where you're going to give it because you, it's already there. The money's in the account and it's not yours anyway. And you have to give it, you have to empty that account. 
Um, but we just keep a certain amount in there. So in case something comes up, an emergency tzedakah, we have to give, you know, we don't want to keep it empty, but, but we want to keep it at, 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 a, at a moderately low level, which means that we're giving it out. We're distributing it. We're not just hanging on to it, but it's going into this account automatically. You know what also, Chaya Rachel, it's so, it's so interesting what you're saying now, and it's such a phenomenal idea because many Rabbanim over the years have told us that that's actually one of the ways that you increase your parnasa is when you have, when you miser your money very specifically the way that you said it, not that you take off money and you give it, but that you miser every single month, you see and you do it that way. And that has the effect of increasing increasing your parnasa. So it's very, very interesting what you're saying. And it, 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 it does, it changes the way you think about things. Go ahead, Nechama, sorry. No, I, I just wanted to say um, another bomb. <laughs> um, so I think it was from 1984, I'm not sure. Um, but the, there was a Fabrengen, um where the Lubavitcher Rebbe said that during this time, I think it's the shop, this Shabbos, Shabbos Nitzavim, the Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah, that there is an idea that if you make a pledge that's completely out of your comfort zone um, for the coming year, that Hashem will, will en enable you to pay it um, and even more. So um, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Okay. Going beyond, going beyond. So for, for example, say, you know, you're giving whatever, you're giving a thousand dollars a month or whatever it is you're giving. And now you're like this charity, just, I, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to give them $2,000 for the next six months, which is completely out of, you can't, like, how are you going to do that? But now you made a pledge. So now Hashem has to use, he has to find a way for you to give it. So it's just, it's, it's, it's just that. Uh, yeah, it's something very interesting. Anyway, that is really an interesting idea. <laughs> okay, everybody, Nechama, that was unbelievable, really unbelievable. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that everybody was macabre in the most beautiful way because it's it's a shem, it's it's Torah, and it's it's um, you know we all we all have to we all have to really internalize it and and. Um, realize that we're just vessels. We're just vessels to reveal Hashem's light in the world. And uh, we should be zochet to be able to be a kli for Hashem's chesed. Because it's really Hashem's no. chesed. Yeah, right? absolutely. No, I mean, someone's just asking in the chat that if, if people give money now, will that go to poor people in Israel? That, that, so, will, go, that will go that to families will be, in Eretz Israel. Yes, Exactly. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is if uh, anyone, if you don't have a PayPal account, you can set one up. Um, I can't have it go to Giselle because then it comes to me personally and I won't know who, like I just, Erev Rosh Hashanah will be too difficult to do that. So everyone just, I put the PayPal address in the, the chat. It's also on the uh, flyer that you know, we send out every single day at the bottom, right? Um, so send whatever you want and anything sent, what should we say, Nomi, today and tomorrow? Um, and then we'll send it for Friday. Does that make sense? Yeah, any anything that's sent over the next, uh, we'll make Couple sure. Days, that, okay. Even we during your Sarah's to make sure that anything that anybody wants to send, we'll make sure that families will directly receive it to, to be able to buy food. If it's for- but Well, for well we're gonna do it in one, we'll do it in one, we'll it in one whatever sense. it is. Right. But just for now, just being practical for now, oh. everyone sends it in the next today or tomorrow. We're going to put it one sum, and that will go towards um, you know people in Israel that need it for Rosh Hashanah and Mitzvah, okay. which is amazing. No me, no me. Yes, I wanted to mention also um, that 